This is the story of Felix Travels Back in Time. Story by Annette Langan and illustrations by Constanza Droop. During a school field trip to the museum, something strange happened. Sophie's cuddly rabbit Felix suddenly disappeared. Felix, where are you? whispered Sophie. Come out right now! But her little stuffed rabbit wasn't hiding in the old suit of armor. Felix, stop hiding! Sophie called, now a little louder as she searched underneath all the benches in the museum. Felix wasn't there either. Don't worry, Sophie. We'll find your Felix, Sophie's favorite teacher said, and she talked with the museum guard. He pushed his cap back from his forehead, put on his glasses, and began searching for Felix. But even though he and Sophie's entire class scoured the museum, the little rabbit and his backpack were nowhere to be found. Outside the museum, the bus driver honks his horn again and again to let the children know it's time to leave. There isn't a trace of Felix. Sophie, we really have to leave now, her teacher says gently. Sophie feels a lump in her throat. Don't be sad. The museum guard has promised to call the minute Felix turns up. Sophie can only nod in silence because she has to fight so hard to keep back the tears. In the late afternoon, Sophie returns home without Felix. Luckily, Grandma is there. She doesn't ask any questions and makes a hot chocolate for Sophie and then tea for herself. Sophie drinks a big gulp and then another, and then the tears begin to roll down her cheeks. Grandma hands Sophie one of the nicest handkerchiefs and takes her into her arms. The next day, Sophie's dad wakes her up to show her a crumpled letter from Felix that mysteriously appeared at the museum. It says, someone, please bring this message to my dear Sophie, 33 Elm Road, Mansfield, Ohio. From the Stone Age, from Felix. Should we open it, friends? All right, here we go. Somewhere among the cavemen. Dear Sophie, I don't know what happened. One minute I was looking at a piece of ancient pottery, and then somehow I landed in the Stone Age. The Stone Age people live in caves that have animals painted on the walls. I'm sure it's because there's no tapestries or posters here. The Stone Age people wear animal skins that are sort of sewn together in any which way, and they've never heard of combs or hairbrushes. There are also no knives or forks. Everybody just eats with their hands. The Stone Age people sometimes dig a hole and wait until an animal falls into it. You know what's very interesting? The people here use many different kinds of stones. They use some to cut and others to start a fire by striking two stones together. Your brother Julius would certainly say that everything here is totally primitive. But life here is very dangerous. The cavemen must defend themselves against wild animals with spears. Yesterday when I climbed up a hill, I saw shaggy elephants. But unfortunately, I have not discovered any city nearby. Just open land everywhere and in the distance, snow-capped mountains. But where am I? I miss you. You're Felix. P.S. If I only knew how I got here. After lunch, Sophie and Julia sneak out the back door and set off for a nearby cave. In a bag, they bring two paint sets, a flashlight, and Julius's favorite book about the Stone Age. Later that afternoon, Sophie and her brother take their sister Lena, their brother Nicholas, and mom and dad hiking and leave them to the cave. Inside it is cool, and in the light of the flashlight, they discover pictures on the wall. Wow, says mom. Did you guys know that real cavemen live in our neighborhood? Her voice echoes through the cave, and suddenly an owl flies past. Eek, cries Lena, and dad is so scared, he drops his flashlight. 